Big Negotiations and Broken Expectations. It's episode 17, season four of The Connors. Let's talk about it. Hey guys, Dan here. This is Dan Reviews. Welcome to my Connors review for the latest episode, episode 17 now in uh, season four. It's called Big Negotiations and Broken Expectations. Uh, and if you are new to Dan Reviews, thank you for finding this video. We do these Connor reviews every week when there is a new episode of the show. We have them dating back to uh, season 10 Roseanne revival. So you can check out all of those uh, on the channel in various playlists. Uh, but let's talk about this particular episode, shall we? So uh, Big Negotiations and Broken Expectations is the title. And uh, usually there are three sort of, uh, you know, main plot threads that are mentioned in the title. But here there really is only two main things. And, and they're, they spend pretty even time, I would say. On both, so this is kind of a 50-50 shot. So uh, we'll just go in order that they mention it in the title. So big negotiations is first. So Darlene uh, is well. Uh, both plots revolve a little bit around this new house that uh, Darlene is buying to uh, move into with Becky and Beverly Rose. And uh, they decided a couple of weeks ago they're going to demolish it because it's an old funeral home and all this creepy stuff. And so. Dan uh, and his crew of uh, literally like 80 year old men uh, are going to theoretically redo this house. Uh, there's some humor there. Uh, ben was trying later on in the episode to figure out how to squeeze some money in to hire a few younger guys. Uh, but Dan's crew is free. So, you know, there, there's that. But yeah, there, there were some jokes at the expense of the fact that they can't even digest food. How are they going to demolish a house? Um, so that all led Darlene to thinking, look, I need to ask for a raise. I, I can't make my ends meet here. You know, this is a big step, obviously, buying this house. And uh, she actually ran into some issues that I ran into when I bought this house here. Because, um, you know, when you're a first-time homebuyer, there's things that you just don't think about. All of the taxes that go along with it, all of the different insurances that you need to have. Uh, for me, I didn't even think about like all the furniture I was going to have to buy and stuff, um, you know, and a washer dryer and all of that kind of stuff because all the apartments I lived in had them and I it didn't just, you know, one of those things where it's like, okay, I put down my life savings for a down payment. Oh, and now I owe thousands of dollars on this new furniture I just bought. So I, I can totally sympathize with this. You know, about 15 years ago when I bought this house, I went through the same thing. Like I just, it, I was living a little bit beyond my means, even though the house itself wasn't, but you know, I had put maybe too much down or, or whatever. But in any event, uh, I'm still here and haven't lost the house. So there you go. Um, but uh, yeah, so she decides to go into Wellman Plastics, ask her boss for a raise. Alexandra Billings is back as her boss. Um, and she basically says, look, I'd love to give you a raise. You deserve one, but uh, no can do. The company is spending all of its extra money on keeping the line workers happy so they don't quit. And that is a very important sort of uh, plot line for right now. You know, um, ever since COVID, that is very hot right now is, uh, you know, paying people uh, that, that are not necessarily even in management extra to keep them because theoretically, oh, you know, they, they are what makes uh, the workforce go around. And I have two part-time jobs as well as my full-time job. So I get it for sure. Um, and, and I, my, both of my companies uh, gave, gave raises during COVID uh, to, to keep people around. So I, I totally get it. Um, but it it's kind of sucks for you know the the middle managers in which case you know Darlene uh, and her boss are because of course they don't run the company but uh, they certainly run that that factory anyway um so she says look why don't you and I Darlene go to the big boss and threaten to quit if they don't give us raises they'll have to do it you know we've we've done so much for this company uh, and and kept it running all, you know these last couple of years Okay, so uh, they go, and Darlene doesn't even want to. She's like, look, if they say, sure, go ahead, uh, what am I going to do? Um, and sure enough, that is what happens. They say, yep, all right, well, we'd love to give you a raise, but goodbye. Uh, you know, if, if that's your if that's your decision, then we can't uh, have you anymore. So they spend a couple hours at the bar, 
sort of jabbing barbs back at each other and, and saying, look, you know, what am I going to do? This is all your fault, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then eventually they each both get raises at first. Only her boss does. And then uh, Darlene does as well. So, aha, the plan worked. Now they are going to have uh, a few extra dollars. And Darlene can feel a little more comfortable about the house. And I'm sure this will blend into some of the other episodes forthcoming. I don't know how many there are left in this season. Uh, I still I think it might be around 20. Um, but I, I'm not really sure. There's nothing listed for next week. So I don't know if next week is another rerun or not. We just had uh, two weeks, I think, of reruns. Um, so I, I don't know. But anyway, uh, this is not the season finale as far as I know. Uh, I think they would have maybe promoted it better. So we'll see uh, what happens. But anyway, so the tag scene at the end is, uh, you know, her coming into the house and they had sort of two different parties going in the house. One for if she made it and then one for if she didn't. So they sort of, you know, Becky, Becky's in the kitchen and finds out the scoop. And so they sort of ditch the, uh, you know, the, oh, you'll get them next time kind of stuff and the black balloons that they had and whatever. So that was kind of funny tag scene. Um, and then... The other part of the story is uh, the broken expectations, and that is uh, more about just Louise and Dan. Um, it involves the family, I guess, too, but Dan basically putting his family first for everything. Um, you know, they had plans for a concert, and he said, oh, I can't go. Becky needs me to babysit. And, uh, oh, you know, they were supposed to do other things. Oh, well, we, you know, uh, everything's got to be put on hold for that because of uh, that, the house that I'm doing and, and blah, blah, blah. So... Uh, look, I, I totally understand Louise's point. Uh, I, you know, Dan is, though, a family man. He always has been. He has always been uh, there to keep his kids happy, you know, go above and beyond at all costs. He's He is, he is for me, one of the great TV dads of all time. I know he doesn't usually get lumped in with uh, that category, but I think he certainly deserves to be. Um, you know, he's always been there for his family, busting his hump and, and, and making sure everybody's taken care of and, and what have you. So, um, but look, Louise does have a point. She's also family now as well. Um, and certainly when she married Dan, she married the entire family. I'm, I don't think there was any, um, preconceived notions from her that she was not doing that. You know, I, I think she gets how important family is to Dan, but I think she's just asking for a little consideration as well, which makes sense. Um, and, and look, I, I love Dan and Louise together. Um, I think that after, obviously, the, the death of his wife of, you know, 45 years or 50 years or something, um, you know, it was going to be tough to move on. I think they, I think this show paced it out nicely so that they sort of dripped her in a little bit in, I think, the end of season one of The Connors. Um, and then sort of kept her around a little bit longer and, and a little bit longer. And then finally they, they did end up dating and stuff. So I, I really like their dynamic. Um, and so, look, I hate it when they fight, but I think we all knew. But at the end of the day, this was going to sort of come back around. This was not going to be a let's get divorced kind of situation. So, uh, you know, it's great. But offered us a few laughs in the meantime. She went to the funeral home um, to sleep there for the night. And Becky can't, comes over and... Um, you know, they, they sort of hash it out a little bit, uh, and, and raise their voices a bit. And, um, you know, Louise ended up storming out of there. So at the end of the day, though, uh, I, th I think Dan gets it. He's like, look, you know, I, I, it's fine. We will uh, work it out. This and that and the other thing. I do think, look, you know, concert tickets aren't cheap. And, uh, I've, as somebody myself who is trying to see a lot of these older bands, they, the joke was they were going to see Bachman Turner Overdrive. And Dan was like, oh, we'll see him, you know, next time. And Louise is like, dude, they're getting their affairs in order. Like, you know, um, I was actually supposed to see Genesis in December. Uh, and my brother contracted COVID uh, over Thanksgiving. And I had, so I had just seen him like a week before. So I was like, dude, I, I told my friend I can't go to the concert. And, uh, you know, look, they ended up, that's their last tour ever. Phil Collins said, look, I'm out. You know, I can't do this anymore. So, uh, you know, there, there's one that I missed. And um, I, so I get it, you know. Now, personally, if it were me and, and you know, Dan was like, oh, yeah, I got to babysit. I would have been like, all right, well, I'm still going to the concert. See ya. So Louise actually should not have maybe pouted. She should have just went to the concert anyway and had a good time and then been mad on the flip side. Um, you know, no reason for her to miss the concert, too. Uh, and obviously, we know music is very important to her. So 
All right, well, whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, listen, this is another uh, plot line that worked for me. I think both of these worked. Um, I wouldn't say I got a ton of huge laughs in this episode. Um, but the interesting thing that I was thinking about when they were doing the whole raise situation with Darlene and, and uh, her boss is that, you know, it's so interesting that in the 90s, Roseanne sort of was the you know, the, the working class show, and oddly enough, Katie Seagal, you know, uh, married with children, was the other one. You know, Al, Al Bundy was a shoe salesman, she was a stay-at-home wife, and so it's, it's kind of interesting that Katie Seagal is now Louise on uh, on the Connors. But, um, yeah, I mean, the wage gap between, you know, frontline workers and, and the blue-collar workers and, you know, the heads of the companies has only wide and wide and wide and so much deeper in the last 30 years um that it's kind of sad but uh you know it, it's almost more um i i don't know pertinent than ever to have these plot lines on this show about you know struggling to make a living you know i, I know we did a lot of that back in the roseanne days um and they referenced a couple of them in this episode they said about the bike shop and they said about the land for lunchbox when they first opened and darlene you know points out yeah both of those you know went belly up um I, it's if for somebody like me who is working three jobs you know just to keep this house really you know and still just barely getting by uh th these plot lines speak to me very well um and, and so i i do get it and the thought of buying a new house right now in this economy is uh <laughs> terrifying to me so you know i'm not really looking to do that but i understand why she is you know she's in her 40s living with her dad still um but uh yeah I, so we did not see a few people in this episode uh, like usual we didn't see dj or mary um but mark has been absent for the last few episodes as well uh and i, I always like seeing him um we saw harris a little bit in the beginning of this just for little little couple of uh comic relief jokes uh they were fine um and then uh, ben of course hanging out in in the house i don't know for whatever purpose now but um but yeah and, and jackie hanging out as well so uh look i guess we're gonna talk mvp of the episode here i started doing that uh like a month ago and seems seems to be good um so i don't know i mean I see where everybody's coming from on this one. I, I really do. You know, Darlene, I see why she wanted the raise, obviously. Uh, makes sense. But I also saw why she was afraid to basically do an ultimatum. But then she got it at the end, so that's great. Um, you know, Louise and Dan love them and love their storyline. Um, I would say the MVP of this episode is probably between Katie Seagal as Louise and... Sarah Gilbert is Darlene. I'm going to give it to uh, Katie Seagal. I, I think, um, you know, she was the most understanding that you could be, I think, in that situation, you know. Um, and I, I, I think she probably had uh, some of the best lines of the episode. Um, and I just, I love her. You know, I love Louise being around. I love her and Dan together. Um, so why not? I'll give her the MVP of the episode. But, uh, yeah, I mean, this, this wasn't like an episode that blew me away or anything, but I really identified with that Darlene plot. Um, you know, I, I, I think it's important to sort of, um, show your worth to your employers, but at the same time, this is a tough, tough economic uh, climate to do that in with an ultimatum because, uh, yeah, you, you never do know uh, what's going to happen with your next job. The, the good news is people are hiring, you know, for, uh, you know, main workers, frontline workers, whatever you want to call them, um, you know, all over the place for, you know, a, a decent amount of money for the first time really in, in my lifetime, I guess, uh, or at least since probably the 90s, you know. Um, but, of course, Darlene is middle management, so she certainly makes more than – you know, somebody who's, uh, first, you know, doing their first job or whatever. So yeah, she, she's at a, a little bit of a difficult position, I think, uh, if they did go through with that. So very interesting stuff in this episode. Uh, I'm going to leave it with a B plus. All right. Thanks for watching. Like I said, I'm not actually sure if there is a new episode next week. Uh, it's not listed as of yet. Um, but that doesn't mean there's not. So, uh, if you know something I don't know, let me know in the comments. Um, and please consider subscribing too. If you like my, uh, Connors reviews, go ahead and subscribe. I would love to have you aboard as uh, one of my subs there. All right. So thanks for watching. We'll see everybody next time.